How's it going everybody? Rag right here today and we are back with our Anaheim Ducks franchise mode here halfway through season number four and we had a lot of good comments and feedback from the last one but before we get started and jump into everything can we get this video to 15 likes? This has been one of my favorite franchise modes and apparently for you guys it has been as well and if you are new make sure to subscribe we've got a lot of great content coming this year but let's go ahead jump in and I was talking about a coaching crisis. Our coach, well, I don't know if it's a coaching change. I believe in the team that I've built, right? Uh, I think the team is good enough, but I just, there's some about it. I mean, you can see our coach has been historically a 50 win coach everywhere he's coached. So far this season, we're 2016 and five. We're not doing it nearly as well with a 55% win percentage. Um, and, and we're just about on the cusp of being out of the playoffs. Now, if we turn it around here at the second half of the season, I really don't think we're going to win 30 of our last 40. That would be insane. But if we can win, you know, 25 of our last 40, uh, just a bit of over 50%, I think, you know, another 50 points should get us into the playoffs. 95 points, we should be a playoff contender. And then once you get to the dance, anything can happen. But you guys didn't want me to wait until the offseason. And the comments were really, really good because they brought up some things that I didn't think about. If I wait until the offseason, like July 1st, fire my coach during the re-sign period, find a coach. I can always rehire my coach because who knows, but I could I could find a coach to come in July 1st because that's when all the coaches are available and free agents. So we could potentially get somebody really, really good overall wise as far as a coach, but also somebody who fits our team perfectly. Another thing that I wanted to uh, look at before I sat down here was we know that the top line is struggling plus minus wise. Drysdale, Zegra, Santavori, Raquel. Our best players are minuses. That's not what you want to see. But I, what I wanted to see was our goaltending. And I had a sneaking suspicion that John Gibson was not playing like the John Gibson we know and love. 899 save percentage and a 288 goal against average. I mean, Dostal's playing better. I wouldn't necessarily say he's playing that much better. Uh, but neither goalie is playing well. And I don't know what it has to come down to. Uh, one of the things we're seeing is Zegras is not shooting anywhere near his career average, I think. He's shooting 7%. Increasing that by 4%, guys, is another 4 goals? Another 5 goals? Uh, he would have 13 and be on pace for 26 again. So, really, we, we have a great pace. Uh, Taro Santavori, I think, his, uh, his shooting percentage is down another 2%. And that's another 3 goals. I mean, he'd be on pace for 46. He's just not having as good of a season. It's as simple as that. Um, I do want to take a look at some of our other stats, like our power play and our penalty kill. Uh, our goals against per game, that is really where we're getting bit, right? Uh, we have the third highest in the division. Now, the Flames are make, are somehow in second place, but I believe they'll drop off. If you've got a higher goals against per game than you do goals for per game, I really don't expect you to be a good team. I, uh, it, for example, look at the Edmonton Oilers, right? They are not. They're not. They are scoring a ton. Don't get me wrong, but they are just not scoring enough. Uh, Vancouver, I think, should fall fall off as well. So I don't feel too terribly about where we're at. Uh, but 19% on the power play is not bad. It's not as bad as Vegas is. Uh, and the penalty kill being at 84% again. That's right around average. That's that's not too bad. So I'm going to stick with what we've got. I think we're just getting a little unlucky to start the season here. I don't really want to go nuts at the trade deadline either. I think we have a very good team. We did decide to move Lindholm up with Ekholm and then play Chernak and Drysdale because Chernak is just so ridiculously good. He's been he's the best plus minus on the team, and he's in that trade just or that signing. I guess giving up the second to sign Eric Chernak via an offer sheet is really looking really really good. Uh, but let's go ahead and get up to this back to back. This actually really this three three out of four we play against Vancouver. Uh, let's simulate up to that because that's going to be huge. Playing Vancouver three out of four times is going to be massive. And there's our our fourth time against Vancouver. So we win against them seven to three. And okay, look at that, guys. That is a five-game winning streak. The Devils snap it, but it's a five-game winning streak. And we bounce right back with three straight wins, including a shutout win over Buffalo. So things seem to be going a little bit better uh, our way. Three straight losses there is not good. But we follow it with three straight wins. And now we're up against Vancouver. And guys, look at that. We are in second place with three games in hand. Obviously, we're only four points above the Kings, but Zegris has started to turn it around, and that makes me believe that Santavori has started to score goals again. Uh, yeah, he's now up to 34. So in the last 
14 games, the man has scored, I think, eight goals or something like that. His shooting percentage is now up to 15%. You can see Zegras has climbed. Our plus minuses are looking really, really good. Uh, and, and I just think that we've started to turn it around. John Gibson's uh, save percentage and goal against average are getting better. How's Jamie Drysdale doing? He's a minus nine, so he's actually pulling Chernak down. Uh, or we're getting scored on shorthanded with him. I don't know. He was a minus six, and now he's a minus nine. Guys, I don't know if Jamie Drysdale is going to be elite. I, I really don't know about him. Or maybe we just need to find a coach that can maximize his talent. Uh, but I'm starting to more so lean on the fact that I don't think Jamie Drysdale is going to be very good for us. But this is a huge three out of four, right? If we can beat Vancouver, we can cement ourselves at the top of the division right before the trade deadline. That would be huge. Okay, these games against Vancouver will go a little bit slower. We'll go up to the Saturday game. So in this game, we are going to win five to one back on top of the division with three games in hand on the teams chasing us. That's huge. All right, and then we'll get up to this other Vancouver game. We are going to lose in overtime, so we only drop a point there, but we bounce back with a win against the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are near the bottom of their divisions with 61 points, which is a lot of points to have to be near the bottom of the division. I mean, the Atlantic is going to be a brutal division for years to come, but what's important is we are still atop our division. So let's keep it rolling here. We lose to Vancouver, but beat Nashville in a shootout, so... I mean, beating that, we went, we went what, 2-1-1 one, and one against Vancouver in the season, so we took um, five of the possible eight points. I mean, they got three out of eight points playing us, and we don't play them again this season, so I believe we only play each other four times uh, within the division, if I am correct. Yes, I am. Awesome. So let's come back to March, and then we've got the trade deadline, guys, and I don't really want to make too many moves. God, Zegris is just starting to explode with goals. Uh, you guys can see Santa Vuori is nearing 40 again. Dylan Strom having a good year. McTavish is a minus 7. Drysdale is a minus 7. Perot is a minus 5. It seems like the younger guys are the minuses here. But Drysdale, I mean, improved by a plus 2. Still 35 points in 60 games is really, really good. So he's getting the, the pluses. But looking at the lines here, McTavish and Perot. I'm going to move McTavish down to the bottom. He's down to medium top 6 forward. He's no longer got that high top 6. So we're going to give Sam Steele that extra ice time. The guy's been playing really, really well. He's an 84, uh, and I really think a plus two down here on the bottom line is going to be really, really nice because when our fourth line goes out there for the 10 minutes they play, they are going to dominate the teams they play up against. Here we go. We're at the trade deadline, and we are going to be considered a buyer. I'm not going to sim through it, uh, but I'm not going to go as aggressive as I did last year. Elias Pettersson. So Vancouver is doing this all without the help of their star forward, Elias Pettersson. And Chernak in two firsts, Drysdale and Montgomery, or Montgomery in two firsts. Drysdale, man, I, I love his contract, but interesting to think about. Shea Theodore here, he is 29, would kind of help out with what we need. Uh, a defenseman maybe could play on that top line, but for Zegers, yeah, it's just... The, the trade values are, are kind of uh, skewed this year, so you really have to give up something to get something. Um, if anything, I'm going to go after one of those guys that's really cheap, could fill in, right? Robin Leonard as a, as a backup, right? I, obviously, these guys are still a little much. I mean, Paul Jarvi doesn't have a contract, so he's not going to help us this year. I'm not in the business of acquiring those anymore. Ryan Johansson here, he's 32. Get another veteran. Uh, second and third and Julkinen. Paul and two... Th I mean, to Paul and two thirds is really not that bad. I don't want to give up Sward. Landon McCallum, Julkin Julkinen, and the fourth. Ryan Johansson is really not, like, something we need, <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I would love to have him, but definitely not somebody we're going to need on the team. Uh, Burakovsky. I really don't want to make any moves. I don't think we really have a spot for some of these people, um, even if we did go out and get them. I mean, maybe a goaltender. Obviously, Evander Kane uh, is a good, good player. Not a good person, but a good player. Uh, Tom Wilson, Tristan Jari. Again, I just don't see any reason for us to go after these guys. Um, we'll take a look at our rookie skaters and somebody that maybe not is growing is Landon McCallum. He's up to a 69 at 21, though, so he might be a late bloomer. Might jump in someday, but Henriksen here. Uh, Jorgen Henriksen was a pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm pretty sure we traded for him. Uh, actually, yeah, we traded for him maybe a few years ago, two years ago at the deadline, it looks like. Uh, he's got 82 penalty minutes in 62 games. Oh, my God. He's got 73 discipline, but holy smokes. 
Um, that is absolutely crazy. I mean, absolutely crazy. Uh, there's Matt McDonald here who's not quite ready to crack the NHL at age of 20. Uh, Pete Montgomery at 19. So some of these guys are okay. We got Axel Anderson who's a rookie. Tracy, these guys already made it. Uh, Zellweger, uh, again, I don't think there's anything I need to trade away here. Lavallee? Lavallee? Uh, I don't know how to say his name, but uh, that hasn't stopped me before. 20-year-old to 63. I can get a 6th and a 7th for him. Are you serious? A 6th and a 7th for some... Yeah, I mean, I'll take the random picks. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and then I think at this point, there's really nobody else that looks like I want to trade them. I mean, maybe Antila. Does anybody want him? Probably, yeah, I figured not. Uh, there's Turner at 18. Yeah, but these guys are still so young, and the rest of these guys are just... Just guys to uh, fill out the AHL, so I'm not going to do anything there. But looking at our goaltender situation, there's a couple fringe starters like Chung here. Uh, Chung and Lilia. Uh, are we going to get anything for Lilia? No. Uh, Julkanen. Julkanen's got medium starter, but he's 20 and 62. Uh, fifth and a seventh, fifth and a sixth. Fourth. Uh, I mean, a fourth there from the Calgary Flames is not a bad idea. Ryan Hartman, too, is another depth player. Uh, but I like the fourth idea. Eric Johnson, Dallas Stars, fourth. But I like the fourth and the seventh. The Oilers, fourth. is going to be a high fourth, actually. Um, Cody CC, no thanks. Kulak, the Kings, that's next year's fourth. Uh, Ar Artur is that Arturi Lekkinen? Yeah, it is. Uh, interesting. Rupstoff, um, not a bad player with medium top nine, but I really don't foresee him being anything. We really don't have space for him. I'd rather take the fourth round uh, pick from the Edmonton Oilers because we know how bad they are. I mean, they're awful. So we'll accept the trade. Getting rid of a goalie. Julkin in. Really not going to be anything at 20 years old. He's still in his in, in the 60s. Uh, we've got plenty of guys, plus we can take shots. We've got uh, Jaden Williams here, who, ouch, is winning lots of games, but is not playing well, uh, which is fine. But looking at our draft picks, we got a first, second, three thirds, four thirds, four thirds, uh, four fourths, two fifths, and two sixths. I wonder what I could get for two fourths. Uh, Rasmus Asplund in a fifth. Okay, so it's really gonna offer me uh, seconds. I mean, a third from the Calgary Flames this year, upgrading to a third in Ponikarovsky. Uh, two fourths for a third is really just a good upgrade. Shane Goshes beer. How has, has he, how has he fallen? Oh my goodness. Two fourths for Shane Goshes beer. An offensive defenseman that would fit all of our lines. Makes two and a half million and he's still really good. Like, look at that. He's more. He's way better than an 81. He's just an 81 because of his physical. Guys, I'm going to do this deal. Screw it. I'm doing the two-fourths for Shane Goss's bear. That's an absolutely no-brainer in my move, or in my book. Uh, it makes sense for both teams. We're a team that's trying to buy and contend. I don't know if I'm going to play him or where I would play him. Um, obviously, we could bench Sward. Uh, we could bench um, Axel Anderson. I like the young guys, though. Like, Axel Anderson is a plus eight. Uh, Lindholm, obviously, is good. Uh, Sword down here is a plus four. Eight penalty minutes for him. Anderson's four penalty minutes there. Really, I mean, Goss's beer was just kind of one of those, we'll get him, we'll see if we want to use him over over somebody else, because, like, he, maybe he fits better and gets us a good chemistry uh, somewhere, being that offensive defenseman. I still think he's better than what his overall shows. I mean, 88 passing, 86 offensive awareness, 85 defensive awareness, 85 shot blocking and stick checking, 88 in his speed and acceleration. He's got a really, really good shooting category with 83. I mean, 85 discipline, he's just not very physical. He's durable. He's got good strength. His body checking is a 78, but that's not the end of the world. Um, I just kind of figured two-fourths for this. I'll take the shot on him. I mean, he had a really good giveaway to takeaway ratio for an offensive defenseman last year. So I think that's all the moves we're going to make. I really don't want to do anything else. Maybe upgrading two-thirds and getting a second kind of thing. We have so many. Uh, us and the Bruins, do we get a second? Is anybody going to call us and say, hey, we'll give you a second for those two-thirds? Alex Nylander, oof, ouch. Uh, stuck at that medium... Uh, top nine forward, exact top nine, I should say. Uh, Salo, no, no, I'm trying to look real quick. Georgiev, Zucker, no, nobody's offering a second. Seconds are kind of hard to get, apparently. So our thirds, we'll take our shots with the thirds. There's, is that Trevor Wong? Hold on, is that Trevor Wong? Is he down to a low top six forward? It is Trevor Wong, and sorry, to, uh, Devils, I'm not going to bail you out of that draft pick you took. That was a pretty high draft pick, I think, or maybe it was a second. 
I can't remember. But I am going to just leave the deadline. I've got Shane Gosh's beer in my back pocket. Um, and I was afraid that it was going to freeze there. Carolina uh, traded Slavin to Detroit for a first Olvestad and a fourth. Okay, and, and I mean, Hartman as well. But we take a look at the edit lines. Um, take a look at our defense. Uh, I think who would, I mean, Sword fits beautifully. He's a two-way defender. Axel Anderson is not uh, as fitting as well. So we'll throw in, I mean, a plus three with Shane Gosh's bear. I love that. Uh, and a plus two with Lindholm and Goshespear. Um, and I mean, I don't want to move Jamie Drysdale down, but I will move Ekholm down. We'll give Goshespear the chance up there, getting the plus two for Ekholm. Um, I actually really like that a lot. Uh, Lindholm and Goshespear. I mean, I think Goshespear is pretty good. Now, don't get me wrong. I can easily just flip it around like that and get the plus three with Sword. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to go crazy we have an option for if things start to go wrong but actually anderson i'm going to replace him for goss's beer i think goss's beer is a better player uh, let's take a quick i want to confirm that while i say that let's double check and see if that is the uh, actual case taking a look at the main roster defenseman here anderson at 81 25 yeah look he's got no offensive puck skills he's pretty good defensively but absolutely no offensive puck skills no shot to speak of no, I mean, same physical presence, worse skater, slightly better defender, a star and a half worse puck skills, same senses, but the poise for Goss's beer is a little bit better, and the shot is a full star better, guys. I, I think Goss's beer is just is, is better, uh, and I'd like to keep Sword playing and uh, hopefully getting um, uh, good sim to next game, regular season, simulate up to this day, sure. And we win in a shootout. All right, and I, something is glitched with my play the games, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But we'll go here to the last five games. I, I mean, Calgary, uh, San Jose's could be in it in Vegas by then, so we'll find out. Uh, Seattle, the Kraken at the bottom, they should be a team we're not gonna worry about. But losing a shootout there, but so we got a point streak going still. We beat the Vegas Golden Knights, which is huge. Uh, point streak still continues. We have not lost in regulation in a little while here versus Edmonton. There it is. There's the loss against two really shitty teams. Uh, we make it three straight losses, four straight losses after we bounce back and get the monkey off our back. We have 92 points and are battling with the Canucks for first place in the division. But really, uh, we have two games in hand. We should solidify it. I don't think we're going to catch the Leafs for the President's Trophy, but we could catch the Wild for first place i mean a win here against the wild is a huge like a, a two point a four point swing really uh one way or the other take two points from them give ourselves two points and a very very big statement win there the blues at 97 us at 94 we have a game in hand on both them and the wild so we got to pick up three points in in a few games here against seattle who are at the bottom of our division how are we gonna do we're gonna win four to one beautiful all right um, and the Blues, look at that. We're one point behind the Blues. We got to pick up one point in three games. Vegas is on the outside looking in. They have to go berserk to make it. So we can eliminate the Vegas Golden Knights, the team that has been the number one t seed in our division for a few years now. And a win against them should put the nail in the coffin, and it does. The Vegas Golden Knights have been eliminated, and we are now tied with the Wild. We have clinched our division as well. The Canucks cannot catch us because we have the regulation and overtime wins. Um, what did I say? Another 50 points when we had, what, 45? Was that? Would, would have been 95? So we've already surpassed the 25-point total. They're going on that bit of a point streak uh, in the middle of the season. Definitely helped, or I should say middle of the season. End of March... Uh, we'll just keep advancing a few days here. Two more games to get through uh, against the San Jose Sharks. We lose in a shootout, but do get one point. And now we are one point behind the Wild for first place in the Western Conference. Can we get first place in the West with a 7-3 win? We cannot. The Wild do end up winning their game. And that loss in overtime does come back to bite us. But the most important thing is we went on some pretty, pretty long point streaks here. Take a look. I mean, beating Vancouver, uh, we went 2-1-1 on against Vancouver, but this stretch here against Vegas, we did well, and I didn't even think about that, uh, how well we've done against Vegas. But you guys can see, um, we started the simulation right about here. 
I think it was here, and we beat Columbus, uh, Vancouver. I mean, four games in a row there, uh, five technically. Uh, we lose to the Devils, but then we pick it back up with some uh, wins, another point. Okay, then we get two regulation losses, but then we bounce back with four wins, five, six points, six games where we get points in a row, drop one, but then we bounce back with an entire stretch here where we went, uh, what was that? Um, one, two, three weeks without really dropping, uh, or without, we got a point for three weeks worth of games, which is incredible. Uh, then we dropped these four in a row, which was tough. Five in a row, actually. We made, we only won one out of seven. Wow, we went one in six. But then we finished the season um, two, four, five, oh, and one. Five, so really, really good season. Not the most tremendous season we've ever had. 101 points, though. Still very, very good. Let's take a look at the stats. Taking a look at this team stats here, guys. Um, you can see finished first in the Pacific. If we take a look at the Western Conference, we would not have gotten it even if we tied them. So they had the regulation and overtime wins, but you guys can see our goals for per game was the best in the West. Goals against per game, not too shabby. We were fifth best goals against per game in the Western Conference. So that, that is seriously solid. Our power play picked it up too. So I wonder if that's where our, our bounce back started to happen. Uh, and then on the penalty kill, oh my goodness, our penalty kill absolutely took off. You love to see that. You absolutely love to see that. 300 goals for in a season is a massive amount of goals for. Take a look at the players' points, though. It's Trevor Zegras with 98, Ricard Raquel with 97, and Santavori scored like a madman. 20 on the power play, 56 goals this season, 83 points. So he was point for game. Peyton Krabs then with 71 points, Strom with 67, and Veselainen with 61. Comtois with a plus nine as well and 56 points. So, guys, we're already talking our seventh forward as a point, as a half a point per game. And McTavish then got demoted to the fourth line, uh, which then actually helped. Sam Steele was a plus 13. So, guys, like I'm kind of glad I kept him. He's only playing 10 minutes a night. He put up 30 points and had a plus 13. That is fantastic. Taking a look at the plus, or uh, the defensive men, it is Jamie Drysdale with a plus three, did turn it around, 43 points, and then Lindholm, I mean, Chernak is a plus 34, oh my goodness, and then Shane Goshes Bear, six points in 22 games, way, way better than he was uh, in Chicago, uh, and was a plus three, so really, I think if you could multiply this by four, that's basically what he would do, he would have put up around 20 points, plus 10 uh, probably close to 10 goals. Like, really, you look at this season right here. Um, the season before last, or last season, I should say. 10 goals, 22 points, 14, uh, plus 14 is probably what you could have expected out of him. So I really got the best version of Shane Gossespear. Uh, and I'm pretty excited to see what he does going forward. Uh, and a good turnaround from Gibson and Dostal, keeping that goal against average under three. Not the greatest season from them, but hopefully they bounce back for the playoffs. Braden Tracy, the rookie, Sward, and then Anderson. Anderson was replaced at the deadline. Just figured we could get a little bit more production, and we certainly got more offensive production there. Uh, let's take a look at the entire NHL. Uh, who finished with what? And Zegris is going to tie with the Art Ross. Oh my goodness. Raquel up there as well. I was not expecting us to be in the Art Ross conversation because nobody got 100 points, but nobody else in the league did. 75 assists. For Trevor Zegris, hey, it was a plus 16. I wonder who's going to win the heart as well. Now, that's really interesting. Uh, considering 20 out of the 49 goals McKinnon scored were on the power play, that is a bit ridiculous. But you guys can see here, the rest of the rest of the league uh, did not do well as far as points. Goals are concerned. Santa Vuori is going to win the Rocket Richard as well. Look at that. Lo and behold, we had a better season than I thought. Taking a look at the defensemen. Uh, I don't know why I'm sorting by 40 minimum 40 games, but you can see uh, we were kind of close in the 40s there with um, not uh, ba -da 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 -da, Jamie Drysdale. So maybe he's actually going to be okay. Uh, and then taking a look at the goalies, minimum 40 games played. It's Nedeljkovic, guys. We we it's got to be Nedeljkovic. Yeah, he had a great season. Spencer Knight also had a great season with wins, but it's Nedeljkovic, I think, in my opinion. But guys, we will be finding out who we play in the playoffs here in round number one. It will be the Winnipeg Jets. And guys, that one's going to have to wait for the next episode. But make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one. It's a free for all.